Howdy y'all, I'm over here next to 4G's engine because we're gonna work on it today. We're gonna start with the water pump. Cleaner's gonna start cleaning. He's gonna clean up the old water pump and that's right here. I've ordered a new packing from Caterpillar. It should get here in, in the mail today. So hopefully we can get that together. Dad's already made a gasket where it mounts on the cover. So let's get started. This is the one off of 7J, right? Yes. With the water pump. Yes. So we're gonna see if we can get this collar loose. It's got a nick out of it here. So we might be using the one off of 4G. We'll have to see if we can even get it screwed loose. All right, now we can get our strap wrench around there. This is too stretchy. What if we put a bolt in there? where that set screw goes and tap on that. Mm, try it. It's going. Every time I work on one of these kind of adjustable pulleys, I have a nightmare of that TD6. Yeah. When I broke that easy out in it, and then I broke the tap off in it. You know, they, they're fine, they, but they get dirty and rusted up, and then it's a problem. Yeah. There, that heat's pulling that stuff in. That's the direction it needs to go to come off. There it goes. Now it's coming off. Boy, that thing was stuck. That heat did it. Yeah. I just figured out that I bottomed out onto this grease zerk here, so I just need to back it off and then I can unscrew it. There's that booger. can see the part numbers different oh, too. Oh yeah. So this is a one off of 7J and this is a one off of 4G. So I think we're probably going to use the one off of 4G. It's it's a smaller one. It's got wear in it too, but the one off of 7J here is broken back here. The internal parts of the water pump are the same. The part number is the same. I'd like to use this one off of 4G. It's got the CH logo on it too. So does this one, I think, if we get oh, it, it, does. It's just get it cleaned up. Dirty, so. I mean, they Virtually, look... Virtually, they're about the same. The they look the same. Look about the same. Although, I can see there's more wear on this impeller than the one here. This one looks newer on 7Js, so. We might want to mix and match our parts here. Now, okay. this one will come off. Okay. What are those? Oh, they're uh, staked. They're staked, and they're keepers for this seal here, I think. Oh, I see. Oh. That seal's a 1B2346. Looking at the seal, that's the wrong part number. It's not what's in the book. This seal is supposed to install all the way down in there. And when we took this apart, it was clear out like this. And I think that seal installs all the way in to where the surface is flush, and then there's these two um, panhead screws here that are staked that will hold it in there. So that was off of our 4G water pump. We're going to take the water pump from 7J apart next. Is the nut loose? No, you'll have to put have a to wrench it on it. Okay. Oh, what'd you do? Took the impeller out. How did it come out? You got to loosen this packing nut. There's the packing inside of there. I've got a new one coming. That one should slide out. I've already took the nut off of it. This is 4G's over here. Don't mix them up. Yeah, I know. See, this one's in a... Eh, it's got some grooves on it, too. We'll have to see which one's better. Dad's bent back the fold-over lock. I'm going to take this nut off of here. That's going to be tight. There it goes. Inch and five sixteenths. I haven't been on the hydraulic press for a while. 
We're going to try and press these bearings out of here. Hundred thousandths. A tenth of an inch it wore back. See how oh, this yeah. isn't wore? Yeah. See the difference? And we're we're comparing these. These are the water pump housings from uh, 7J and 4G. And they're both the same part number. But there's a lot more wear on this one from 4G here, Dad's noticing. And that seal had walked out on that side of the water pump. And also on the back, you can see right here, it's actually eaten through. So there's a little hole right there. And... There's also a lot of scale and barnacles and calcium deposit that this one off of 7J doesn't have. So I think this is going to definitely be our better option here. 7J pays off again. We would have been hosed without that parts tractor. 3963. All right. We're checking to see which impeller is going to be better. And this is the one off of 4G. You can tell it's got a lot more rust, corrosion, and a little bit of scale on there. What's this one look like? They're the same part number. See, this one's showing about three or four thousandths. It's got some wear. Yeah. This is 60, 960. That one was 963. Yeah. But we'll definitely use the one from 7J. Yeah, I think so. Among other things we're going to use from the 7J water pump are the bearings. These are still good. One thing about the water pump I've noticed on old tractors is they typically did get greased. So I seldom find one that hasn't been actually over greased. I'm going to use the packing nut off of 7J, the housing off of 7J. I've got a new packing right here. It's a 1A8736. So we'll put that in. For the hub housing here, and where the belt pulley rides, we're going to go ahead and use the one off of 4G. It's a different part number. It's also narrower than this one here off of 7J. But the one on 7J has quite a substantial groove in here where, where the belt rides, and also has some damage here on the pulley. I think that the one off of 4G will also be a little bit more original. It was cleaner and worked better, too. Dad's happy he's whistling over there. Not only is this housing all around better, but there's less corrosion inside there. All these small ports are open. And that bronze bearing in there that has the graphite impregnated cross hatching that we learned, thanks Squatch, um, it looks a lot better than the one on 4G. The one on 4G is very worn. So... This is definitely the one we're going to use. We got a little bit of cleaning up to do, and then we can put this thing back together. We're talking about protecting all this stuff. I'm going to put this in my sandblast cabinet and do a little blasting on this, but I want to protect all these sensitive areas, especially the brass because it's soft. We're picking a, a fan that we're going to use, and again, you can always tell the 7J ones because they have that bright yellow paint on it, and the 4G stuff is the factory the old yellow similar to our highway yellow and we definitely have a gasket to make right there and i don't think it's one half dozen the yeah other, i was just frankly. looking here these are a little more nicked up than the ones off of 4g i think they're the same part number 5b18 something over here yeah and this is the same thing yeah yeah but this and this and looks a lot better see it's still got machine this this and walked back yeah and got worn off yeah so we'll use this we'll guy. use 4g's original fan getting things ready for the sandblaster here and i'm gonna knock the packing out of this nut here oh that thing's just tore up it's like a lead impregnated washer these used to be a lot of times they were solid lead i remember yeah, they got three of them, just like the new one. Only the new one is a, like a fiber. There we go. Okay, so the wind was blowing something in. 
Definitely a nice day to work inside. While I'm sandblasting, Dad's over here cleaning up other parts, and right now he's working on the oil filler. Are you really amazed that we actually find dirt and everything anymore? Oh, it, it's nasty. Look at that. You know what's surprising about this? There's no flaxseed in it. Yeah, yeah, that's a rarity. Yeah, everything else in this tractor's had flaxseed in it. Well, I guess I was lying. There is flaxseed in here. It's just starting to germinate. He had something he wanted to show us all, and oh yeah. So I pulled this plug out of the bottom, and it is just packed with gunk. This is 4G? This is 4G. Yeah. Like everything else we found. It's just packed. I don't know. That it, I, it was hard to get this plug out. Yeah, it looks like it. Well, I guess we'll do like we do with everything. Clean it up and I can sandblast it and we'll paint it. Yeah, we're doing it again. I'm making another gasket for the front of this water pump. Got everything for the water pump cleaned up. I'm just waiting on a couple of parts and we can put it together. We're gonna reassemble the water pump and we're gonna start with grandpa's favorite, lubricate. I just love the smell of this stuff. We're gonna reuse the old bearings that came out of here. I think they're in good shape, they're smooth. The ones off the 7J are not as good. Got the bearings packed with grease and those are going to press inside of here one there and one on the inside here. And in between them, you don't want to forget to put the spacer in because it will not fit in between those bearings after they're installed. This is why we don't throw anything away. I got an old 4V 2863 bushing, it looks like. But I put that right there. It fits inside of this flange perfectly so that I'm not pressing on the outside of that flange. And when I flip this over, I will put the spacer in between these bearings. I need to get something nice and clean that I can get started with pressing this in. Kind of scooch that over under the press and let's see what we can do. Now I'll flip this thing over onto this side. Drop my spacer in there. I don't know that it's going to matter, but I'm going to line it up right there. And we'll press this other bearing in on this side. And it's going to be seated a little bit further in. There's a slot for the bearing and a slot for a seal outside of the bearing. So that pin should work perfectly. Bearings are in there. You can kind of see that spacer that's in between them. And it's kind of loose in there. And it was when we took it out as well. There you can see kind of fell down. So next we need to get our seals installed. According to the book, this is the cross-reference number. is a 470059 National Oil Seal. And I remember that the seals that came out of here were a National 2. But the CAT cross-reference crosses over perfectly to this one. Make sure that we're equal. And there's a gasket that when the fan is installed, it seals the front. Just gonna take a little of this grease from the inside of here, put it on the lip of that seal so that it's lubricated. Got our main housing up here, and back there's the where the main packing goes for the packing nut. Then there's a packing that goes up here, and that is going to be just as felt. Now, this is a cat part number 1A8742, and the main packing back here comes in this clear tube, and you can see there's kind of a slight taper on the end on both sides. And mine was actually out of the package. One of these had fallen out. But you can see on the back they're flat, so you want the flats to be together and the tapers to the outside because there's a taper right here where that'll seat. 
and there's a taper inside this nut where it needs to seat on the other one when you tighten the packing. And this stuff has a very unique and distinct smell. It's almost smells like B.O. It's kind of bizarre. It's kind of difficult to see, so maybe my light shining through there. There is a metal, what they call, cat calls a retainer, that goes right here. And just inside that retainer, there's a felt. So, I need to put a punch in here and drive that retainer out so that I can put the new felt in. And that is this felt right here. I'll just work my way around. Oh, look at that. So there's the retainer. That might be kind of fun to put back in. But let's see if we can get the felt out too. There it is. So there's the felt. We'll replace it with the new one. And this design changed somewhere in the 7J series, but the 4Gs all have this. I'm going to clean that out with some brake cleaner. Now, this retainer was in there this direction, but something tells me that, that felt that this is supposed to be in there this direction, and it'd be a lot easier to remove in the future as well. So I may clean the sides of this up a little bit and push it in this direction. And to do that, I'm going to have to probably push a punch all the way through here and put a plate or something across here so that I could punch this back in. Later model D4s, they have two seals on the hub. So there's a seal here, but there's also one out here. These do not have that. And the later model ones also have a different seal system in here. There's not a packing. We're going to put our felt in here first. Here's my plate, and hopefully you folks can see this. I've gotten a long 7 16 bolt here. There we go. Yeah. You know what? That felt is slipping in there perfectly. I, I almost think this is the way it's supposed to be. The felt that I took out of there was also shorter. That looks a lot better. I really feel like that's the way it's supposed to be. And that felt is kind of squishing out into that pocket. So that'll kind of hold it a little better. I've taken my smaller punch and kind of drove that in there a little further. And I really am a lot more comfortable with this installation this direction. Got the impeller shaft here. I'm going to put just a light coating of grease back here on everything. Okay, the next thing, we've got this packing to put in here. So to do that, I'm going to start the impeller right here and get it slightly through here. And I'm going to need it just enough that I can get the packing onto the impeller here. Might have to just take it off of that, but I think that the idea was to keep them in order, but I know what order they go in. I've done some of these old water pumps. I recall they were lead packing, so that is going to be quite the fit to get that nut started, I imagine. But it doesn't matter yet. We can put our impeller in. I gotta make sure I get it through the front packing that I just installed. Everything's very tight. This actually took, what I had to do was put a bar through here to put down pressure on the nut and then turn it with a pair of pliers so I could get it started. And I had to do that off a of camera because I just did not have the room to get you guys in there to see when I was holding bars and everything else around here. Got the packing nut on here. I've got it on two or three threads, so it's good and secure. I'm not gonna mess with it yet, but we'll have to re readjust the packing later once we get this on and the system full of water. I'm using the thread locker red because I it's supposedly the high strength. And I do not want these to back out and get in a belt or something.
We're almost home free. I've got my seal lubricated. So we can put that on there gently. I've got to make sure that that uh, spacer lines up. There it is. There's this fold over lock here. And a nut. And again, this has got the machine side. We'll put it towards the fold over lock. That's nice and free. That's a little snug. I can back off the packing a little bit. But I think we're in business. I don't want to put any oil on these threads quite yet because we got some painting to do. And we want to make sure that we get that painted before we do that because I don't want oil in my paint. The last thing is going to be putting this gasket in here and putting the fan on here. Once the fan is on, there is actually a pin right there that pins it all together. And that's virtually it. That's the water pump. But we're not going to put the fan on because we'd like to paint all of this stuff separately. So, there's the water pump. One step closer. I do want to thank you for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. And I got it crooked. Oops. Eh, no harm, no foul. Um, there we go. Thought the Loctite lid was Loctite.